Hi, I'm Michael, Michael Kessler from the Vancouver Hackspace, and today we have Alex from Head Garage, and he's going to show off his robot, uh, ro robot dog. Um, you want to you want to tell us a little bit about the uh, what you've created here? Yeah. So it's um, well, it's, uh, the robot's name is Stanley. It's a quadruped robot. Um, it took a couple of years to to put together. Um, yeah, we are a group of four people, based in between Vancouver and Montreal. We uh, we wanted to create a robot that actually is affordable. It's easy to to construct. Uh, we we built it in between uh, basically our own apartments, own labs. So. Um, that's it, that's Stanley. What inspired you? We, we like to create ways to interact with objects and uh, we wanted to create uh, kind of like a software that allows to, to connect software to, to each other, right? So that was the, the initial goal and then we went to, um, we look into different devices and we want to connect ARM with quadruple robots or vacuum cleaners and so on and so forth. Well, we definitely get inspired by, by you know, looking at Boston Dynamics or Unitree uh, you know, animal, uh, Anibots in, in Switzerland. I mean, they, they, they create really great quadruple robots. Um, and we wanted to make something that it's, it's, it's affordable for makers. That's cool. So you said this is, uh, this is made by a, a, a group of, you said four people, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And um, where are they located? Well, they are, well, um, in Vancouver. We're two year in Vancouver, Gail and I. Uh, there is um, John in Montreal. And, uh, and now, currently, uh, our mechanical engineer well, for pandemic reasons, it's it's in Poland. Okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so if not, we'll be based here. And you all do different tasks on the robot. Yes. Yes. We uh, well, uh, Damien Damien is uh, the man <laughs> behind uh, behind the mechanics. So uh, I am I'm more on the well, I take care of more of the software or the software stack. So I take care of the firmware, uh, the API that controls it, and you know, and the rest of development. So the software. Uh, and then John, it's uh, take care of the assemblability, so and uh, also the a bit more like how we present it, and you know like even the color scheme, and <laughs> um, and Gail helps helps out to you know the other aspect of you know communications, uh, you know so while well, she take care of the, the guide since it's a kit, so 400 pages of assembly. So, so somebody can can go ahead and build this themselves. Yes. Yes. We are building it that way. So we're building with the idea that you can build it yourself at home. How would I go about uh, building a Stanley? Well, you can do it two ways. You can do, we, in, the, in the near future, we're going to open source the, the, the entire model. So you can 3D print it yourself at home. Uh, you can CNC, CNC the parts yourself. So there will be like 2D diagrams to do this. Uh, we also, the electronics will be open source. So you can, um, well, fabricate it yourself or go to, uh, you know, um, Axpace to fabricate it okay. as well, to come here. Um, and, uh, or you can, we also provide kits. So if you, may, for instance, you don't have all the capability of you know, producing all the parts for yourself, uh, we, we basically provide a kit. You can order it from us and, and uh, assemble it. That's yeah. cool, that's cool. So mo you, said, you said 3D print, this is mostly 3D printed? No, to make it uh, easy to construct, we uh, we decided to use a two D part two D only parts for the CNC so the milling part so all the FR four are only two D and um, um, and then the three D parts are basically the three D printed part so all the in this case all the red parts are the three D printed parts and yeah. then all the black parts are are, yeah. are milled there are one hundred and twenty six three D printed parts okay uh, and around 40, 45 parts that are uh, milled ooh so yes. Complicated robot. <laughs> yes. That's cool, though. That's that, it's really it's a real stunner. So what can it do? Well, it can walk. It can jump. Uh, is uh, well, it's. Uh, I think we, we for the moment we're in a phase um, where we uh, it's we really focused on the construction. So we we, we wanted to make really um, well easy to build and also so or easy to produce first of all. Uh, then we are we went into the phase of easy to build. So we all the. All, the, all these parts are, are built in a way that actually are, uh, you know, even the tolerance. We went through several iterations to get the right tolerance because to just make it a pleasant way of, you know, putting it in. Because if not, you will be like struggling to, <laughs> to put together pieces. And um, that that's goes for all over, uh, all over the, 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 the robot. Also, um, the, next, the next step is that we are, we are into is really like um, the software side. So for the moment, can only walk, can jump. Uh, as a, a little bit of more um, controls 
that we develop, but uh, we look forward to develop more on it, yeah. So uh, hardware-wise, um, is there a lot more that you could, can, could do with, uh, with more software development? Yeah. It's, um, it will definitely with, uh, uh, you, could, you could use it uh, to do reinforcement learning. You can, uh, to, uh, you could put a camera on top. I mean, in the, uh, uh, it's, it's designed, for instance, to have has all these holes on top. So you can add payloads and uh, you can put one kilo on top. So you can also put a little simple uh, 3D printed arm that you can print it from another kit that you may have or you engineer yourself. And then basically you can connect that to the, for instance, to the Raspberry Pi and you could have a, a little robot that work around and can, for instance, pick up an object, right? So you can then use cameras and you, know, you can do uh, vision programming uh, and so on and so forth. So there's a, there's a lot more that will come from this even though um, even though the hardware might not have to change. Yes. Um, what's the development path for the hardware? So yeah, so this one is, there are only five models of, the, we call it V1, so standard V1. Uh, of the, of we have a new iteration that so we are already working on and will be released in February. Uh, and actually this, that one is, will be the more, the public version uh, that you know, will be with open source kits and, and the kit itself that you can purchase. Uh, that version so will have way more space in, in the center canister, this is because um, okay, like the more we talk with people about what they would like to do with it, the more they say, well, we would like to uh, put, you know, gas sensors, we would like to put uh, more, we would like to run it for uh, one, an hour and a half, not 45 minutes. And so, you know, you, we will need more space for batteries. Um, um, yeah, so that's, uh, so the, it's, it's close in the sense of like the shape, the, the, the mechanism for the, um, for the legs, this capstan drive. Are, we keep them, the, it's a, still a 12 degree of freedom. It's really similar in terms of like look, but it's just uh, bigger, uh, bigger legs. Um, so also to be able to clear um, normal size steps. Now you were telling me earlier that um, uh, there's some universities that are looking to this mm -hmm. for um, academic studies. Yes. Um, could you tell me a little bit about that? We built it for makers, right? But clearly like it's uh, really shortly after that we discovered that also university and schools are interested on, on the different aspect of the building and then programming. Uh, and we're working with UBC, we're working with Oxford University, uh, we work with UMBC in the United States, uh, with uh, the Polytechnic uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, and they, they all, um, and actually we have a relationship with them where they're doing, well, most of the, um, the software development since that they, they use our uh, base framework and base API and they build on top of it. Oh, that's great. So yeah. everything that they do is going to help out this whole ecosystem. Yeah, I think, I think it, w one thing they really love and what we love as well is that it will be open source. And so it's, it's really neat because not being a closed source platform, uh, we, it's like the university can publish freely, can, can release code freely. Then, you know, people can test stuff freely because they are, it's accessible and they can modify it after and republish. And I think it, that's, that's the cool part of it. Yeah. That's cool. How many Stanleys are there right now? Five. Five, five yes. Stanleys. Where are they? Uh, there's one here, uh, one at UBC. Um, there is one in Poland, and uh, one it's on its way to Japan. Yes. Wow. Wow. It's uh, missing one, probably. <laughs> Stanleys all over the world. Yeah, it's, it's going everywhere. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So uh, what would you like to see, what, what would you like to see Stanley do that it can't currently do? I would like to be more autonomous, that's for sure. Like it's, uh, but it, it will take a couple of years before I think get there. Okay. Uh, we definitely, and um, yeah, we like him to, to be able to go around and you know, scan uh, autonomously the, the environment, uh, you know, to detect objects, to not bump an object, to be able to you know, do stairs. Uh, also, it's something that will be super exciting. Where, where can we go to find out more about the Stanley project? Yeah, you can on uh, our YouTube or on our Instagram. So it, at, at, at Garage uh, on Instagram, uh, on our YouTube uh, at IAD.io, uh, or we have uh, our website, www.iad.io. Great. Thank you very much, Alex. Really, really thank appreciate you. it. Thanks. And uh, thank you for coming by Va Vancouver Hackspace. Oh, thank you for hosting us. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.